What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today we're going to be continuing our Artifact series, and this time talking about one that is very easy to acquire, free to play, but isn't really that meta-defining, but has a lot of good uses. So it has some ups, it has some downs, and yes, we are going to be talking about the Kiss of Ghosts. Now, as a basic item back in the day, it was like the best offensive artifact, even on the scary armies. The armor break was amazing. Nowadays, there's just better options overall, but there are a few heroes that absolutely need this, for certain types of areas in the game, like either Aspen Dungeon or Sea Land, it can be a huge help. The Helon is amazing. So first up, let's jump into it. Let's talk about the artifact, both in its five-star form and in its glittery to splendid form, and then talk about what heroes is good on. Hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so let's take a look at the artifact right here. We're going to go over to artifacts. We, of course, have one in our bag, but we might as well just take a look at the orange version, fully upgraded. Uh, I think it's down the bottom here. Yes, so we have the Kiss of Ghosts. This is the, or sorry, six-star version. I keep saying five-star, but is the six-star upgraded version. Gives 25% attack, which is the very high end of artifacts that give attack. 100% armor break and 14% HP. So it's a nice, well-rounded artifact. It gives attack. It gives HP, much like the Golden Crown. And actually, 25-14, what does the crown give here? Ah, uh, where is the crown? My eyes are probably going right past it. Was it right down here? Yes, it was. <laughs> so it's kind of like the opposite of a crown, 1825 versus 2514. Uh, the 100% armor break is huge though, because armor provides quite a bit of damage reduction in this game. Uh, it, it, it's very nice. Some things to remember is armor break is not the same as holy damage. Holy damage is something that does additional damage to your normal attacks that bypasses their armor armor break literally gets rid of all the armor an enemy has so it's similar to what drake does now but his defense down is much better because he gets rid of armor break damage reduction all the other different stats whereas this only gets rid of armor so it can be good uh, I have had very good success with this on certain heroes in aspen dungeon that you wouldn't really expect it to it's a solid artifact and you can get quite a few of them very easily free to play by saving up for big events. Now, when it comes to the upgraded version of Kiss of Ghosts, it really doesn't matter between Glittery, Radiant, and Splendid. Either way, you're going to have plenty of healing on this. A lot of times, even just the Glittery and you use a basic attack, that essentially fully heals your hero so long as you don't kill an enemy. Because, of course, if you kill an enemy, this effect works the same as... Um, Balance Strike, there we go, Barry's on it today. Uh, so if Balance Strike or this kills an enemy, you don't get the healing effect of it, which is kind of sucks, but of course it is what it is. This can be really good in certain places though. It can be decent in Aspen Dungeon. It can be amazing in Sealand. And that's mainly what we're gonna talk about today is what heroes need this artifact to really make Sealand very, very easy. It's kind of like almost one of every faction that can kind of use it very well. The armor break also helps in Sealand beyond that. Outside of those two areas, there really aren't that many great places to use it. Most people are going to have a Drake on their team, which makes Kiss of Ghosts 100% armor break, completely useless. But if you are in the early game, it can be your, one of your best offensive artifacts for PvE. Of course, Antler's Cane is going to really trump it out in longer battles, but it does have its merits. So let's move on and talk about what heroes are actually good with this artifact in what game mode. So starting off, let's talk about the shadow heroes that can use this artifact. Now, like we did say, it is a good, well-rounded artifact for the early game. It can be useful, say, on an Ithaca and PvE situations. If you don't have a Drake on your team, your early game, Kiss Ghost is going to very much increase your damage output. It can be very, very good in the early game. Uh, I wouldn't use it on heroes like Horus or really any of the older heroes. Out of the new ones, I mean, Horus, Ithqua, Tix, Eloise, those are the ones we really want to talk about. 
Horus, you definitely want a defensive artifact, so it's not going to be great on him. You could probably get away with it on Eloise, but again, she works better with defensive artifacts. The one it really works well with is Tix, and Tix definitely needs this to get Sea Land 20 done, at least for a like bargain bin style clear. If you can get a glittery Kiss of Ghost and literally just have a whole team of five star CC heroes or even three star CC heroes with the Ice Trolls, an upgraded Kiss of Ghost, glittery or above, will be enough to make sure he heals the full every round. Because he's not going to be killing everybody every round, so he will be getting heals. You guys know how much damage his basic attack does, and you definitely know how much damage his active ability does. Well, when he uses those, he's going to hit a ton of targets. He's always going to be healing back up to full. And of course, you're definitely going to want at least like V2 on him to get Sealand 20 done. But with that artifact, you don't need healers, you don't need... Anything besides CC heroes like Jaros, Ice Trolls, things like that. To lock down the enemies for a couple rounds so we can start stacking up some of his damage reduction on the enemies. Get some damage buffs to himself and then really go to town with actives while he keeps himself healed up. So Tix is definitely probably like one of the best heroes for Sealand to use this artifact. Now moving over to the Fortress faction. There really aren't... Actually, there, there's a couple of heroes, now that I think about it, that do very well with this artifact. Of course, you could use it on a Sigmund, but uh, Sigmund's kind of an older hero. He does have armor break himself on his abilities. Not really something you want to Fiona, unless you're building here for like PvE damage, like boss damage. But again, not really the best. The attack buffs does help. Kind of buff up her shields a bit. There's two heroes that do okay with it. Number one is Inosuke can do very well with it as well in Sealand. He can actually do well with it in Aspen Dungeon up to about death 50 as well. He doesn't need damage reduction. What you want is you want very offensive setups on him so he can get as big of a shield as possible for Aspen Dungeon. Plus, if you do have it upgraded to a glittery or higher, it does give him much better survivability. Or I guess you should say longevity in aspen dungeon because one thing in those suffers with is you need a lot of potions to keep topping him up because his shields will break eventually and they'll take damage and he doesn't have a self heal so you will need potions to do that the other one that is absolutely amazing with it yes absolutely amazing is penny we did a sea land or sorry we did an aspen dungeon 101 run with penny with the kiss of ghost we kept failing over and over and over with a punisher thinking you know penny she wants to crit so that she can do a ton of extra damage and everything when she does get those crits off but in reality that armor break was huge on her and it made a seal hand or i keep saying seal land. it made her push all the way up to uh death 100 so much easier so if you're struggling with the punisher staff pushing aspen dungeon 100 with penny Swap over to a Kiss of Ghost. It will do wonders. Number two is it does decently on her in Sealand. Honestly, a lot of people run one of the artifacts, like the anti-warrior artifacts. A lot of people just run the Punisher staff because, of course, Sealand, you really need to crit. Whereas Aspen Dungeon, you can get to pretty close to 100% crit chance without needing a Punisher staff, which is really nice. But Penny and Aspen Dungeon, absolutely amazing. Now, I haven't had too much use with a lot of heroes in the Abyss faction. Waldeck could probably do okay with it. Same with Marax. Actually, Marax would probably do decently with an upgraded one in places like Aspen Dungeon and Sealand. The one that truly, truly shines is Delacium. Delacium does amazing with it and is just like Tix, where if you can just build a couple support heroes around him that give debuffs to the enemies, because of course his damaging abilities do more damage based on the number of debuffs on the enemy. So if you just put some Margaret, some Scaries, some Cthugas in your lineup and just let them get debuffs on the enemy in rounds one and two, just let Delacium replicate them and and keep surviving every round because even his basic attack hits multiple enemies which means tons of healing for him it keeps him going he's tanky enough to do it he will need at least like v2 plus as well but he can do very good now the one that i haven't really had any luck with is forest i know some people have used it on garuda for sea land i usually use a punisher or something like an antlers cane with a better effect it can work good, but if you are already using like a holy attack attack stone, it usually feels better to use like an antlers cane. But again, Garud is one of those flexible ones. You can really use Punisher. You can use any artifact on her and manage to get Sea Land 20 done. So that is pretty solid. Last up here we're going to talk about is going to be Aspen. Putting it on Aspen, 
or an antlers cane or a punisher staff are all great things to go for sea land 20 they're very good the extra healing is nice if you have the almond Ra's and the carry and that whole cheesy setup that you can do in dark sea land it can do decent on aspen light faction there's really no one you really want it on they do better with other artifacts even russell i mean i kind of just like running energy russell when we're talking about sea land for light you can probably get away with it on him it's not going to do much most of the time he is going to kill a target or not do enough damage for the heal to be significant on an upgraded one so yeah not really anybody in the light faction so let me know what you guys think do you use it on another hero that i didn't talk about that actually works out pretty good leave a comment down below let me know and also let it leave a comment let me know what next artifact you want to hear about hopefully you guys are enjoying the series i'm going to try to do one or two of them a week just so we can like you know space them out and not hit with you every single day hopefully you're enjoying them see you guys next time